Welcome back to the Grand Lodge Media Centre. My name is Peter Curl and I'm the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Western Australia. And today I have with me Ash Rosendale from Canteen WA. Before we start, I'd like to thank uh, Matt and the crew behind the scenes for uh, the production of today's uh, video. I'd uh, Ash, um, your role um, in Canteen, probably more importantly, some people might not understand exactly what Canteen's about. So mm. do you want to give us a rundown of what Canteen actually does? Yes, I'd love to. And um, thank you very much for having me in today, Peter, to be able to share a little bit about Canteen and, and obviously the support that Freemasons have been uh, providing over the last three years. My role at Canteen is state manager, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, in a moment. But Canteen is the, the only organisation in Australia that's dedicated to providing tailored support to young people and their families impacted by cancer. We do that with uh, through a range of services, um, and we are really um, very thankful for the support of the community and people like yourselves who enable us to be able to do that. Well, what about yourself? You want to give us a bit of background of yourself and your actual role as a state yeah. manager? Yeah. So um, as you mentioned before, um, as, as, as state manager, um, my role is to uh, oversee a team of, of dedicated staff. Um, they range of, a, um, of different roles, um, a multidisciplinary team that enables the support to be provided to the young people and families. So they're people um, like social workers, counsellors and psychologists, and also event staff like um, youth engagement specialists, I like to call them, people who can really engage well with young people, make them feel comfortable and give them an opportunity to um, engage with each other too. Then we also have um, an administration side to obviously what we do as well um, and fundraising. Uh, and my role as state manager is to, to oversee all that and oversee uh, the strategy of uh, the state as well. So at Canteen, we have a national strategy. We're a national organisation. But my role, particularly uh, here in WA, is to try and operationalise that. Um, often, my role means being the brand ambassador, doing mm. things like that. this, getting the word out there about Canteen so that more people become aware of the services that we provide so then more people can access support and we can get more of the community, like yourselves, generous people, supporting our cause. Canteen itself, who do they actually support? Yeah, so Canteen supports um, young people and their families. Um, so aged 12 to 25 years old. So a big misconception about Canteen is it's kids with cancer. It's actually adolescents and young adults. Um, so that 12 to 25 age range. And um, another big misconception about Canteen is that we just support patients. That's not actually the case. We support, we do support patients, um, but we also support a different range of uh, young people impacted by cancer. So we support the siblings of patients. We also support the offspring of patients. So for instance, if um, a parent has cancer, we also support them. What we know is about cancer, that cancer is prevalent in the older age of demographic. Therefore, often it's the offspring between that age range that are actually um, left with very high levels of distress at that time. And we also um, support bereaved. So if they've lost a parent or sibling to cancer. So you can see there that it's it's not just the patient side of thing, which is a big focus of our work. It's also about supporting family members who've been impacted too. The actual services that you actually do provide, can you give some examples or tell us about that? Yeah, so our services have a, then there's a no, uh, a no one size fits all approach to them. I can imagine that. Yeah. Um, with over 23,000 young people around Australia impacted by cancer every year, it's really important that we can um, tailor services to each individual's needs. Um, so I think what we're probably best known for is our camps or day programs where young people get to come along, connect with each other, and form those relationships. Now, through COVID, they've had to. Um, switch to also a digital environment too. So we've actually had to have, as I'm sure you've known with some of your mm. meetings, um, you've had to make those into you know the digital Zoom environment. Um, so we've had young people connecting from all around Australia on those. But luckily in WA, we've been able to continue providing those face-to-face -face opportunities too. Um, one thing that we um, are really passionate about is that 
overnight camps. Um, so for instance, in December, we have um, 40 young people coming from all around Western Australia um, together who all share similar experiences, who can meet one another gain those um, connections and those relationships that's then going to be able to support them beyond canteen when mm. we can't be there. Another aspect of our service is our counselling and our individual support. So we have um, a beautiful space in our new office space um, that provides um, soundproofed um, private counselling rooms where young people and their families can come in and access that more one-on-one -on -one based, based support. Um, provided by our clinicians. That really helps to um, for them to explore their emotions and build resilience and coping skills uh, through that work. Um, another part of what we do, we have a 24-7 online community. Um, this was established quite a number of years ago now, but more recently has gone into the app form. So if there are young people out there, no matter what time it is, they can log on to um, the online community wherever they are in Australia, as long as they have an internet connection, which most young people do these, yep. these days with their mobiles. And they can um, read blogs, they can participate in chat forums, but they can also access online counselling there too, which is a fantastic new addition to our service. We also have an education and career support service. Um, so we have a staff member here in Western Australia dedicating to providing that support through their education and career. Because at that point in a young person's uh, life is a crucial time when adolescents, they're yeah. forming their identity and often their education and their career is really a major part of who they are. Now, when cancer rocks that, that all falls apart. Yeah. So we have an education and career sp specialist on site who works with young people specifically around that work. One of the other really exciting projects we have is the robots project. So it is exactly as it sounds. Um, when a young person um, gets diagnosed, this, this um, service is particularly for patients. When they are diagnosed, often they have to go into hospital for treatment and their schooling gets really impacted. So they lose touch with their education, often their um, their scores at school will go down, their grades will, will lower and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they also lose contact with their peers and their friends. So what this robot actually does is go into the school environment and participate in the classroom when the young person can't and they can operate it from their, ho um, from their hospital bed or from home um, via the use of an iPad. It's like an avatar. Virtually like an avatar, correct. Um, so that's one of our most exciting projects that we've got working at the moment, which we're seeing really good outcomes with. Finally, I'll talk to you about our youth leadership program. So youth leadership is extremely important at Canteen, as I know it is mm. with the Freemasons also. Um, and it's one of the things that is most special about our, our organization. Uh, our young people tell us all the time, no other, no other person really gets what they're going through unless they've been there and done that. And we always tell young people that they control their own destiny. So we have young people um, at the center of our organization. And in fact, above the CEO on the board of directors, there are nine seats. Four of those are held by associate professionals from different professional backgrounds. So they help to guide the organization. But the other five seats and the chair of the board are actually all young people who've mm -hmm. had a cancer diagnosis um, or, or, or have been impacted by cancer in their lives. Um, so it's absolutely incredible that young people take the majority of the seats on the board and get to guide um, the organization from the top down. We also have a, a local uh, leadership group um, locally here and a local committee, and they help to guide us at a local level. They advocate for the needs of young people. Um, we have youth ambassadors, and we've got one going along to the um, the, the Czech presentation at the yes. breakfast to tell, yeah. to tell her story and share her experiences. And they get training to enable them to really do that successfully and have a good experience. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a snapshot. Um, there's a lot more that Canteen offers too. Um, and I'd really encourage anyone, if they want to, you know, have a, have a bit of a more look into it, there's uh, head to canteen.org.au for more information. There's just a couple of points that I've just realised after you've given that explanation. Mm. One is the camps and everything else you provide, yeah. the overnight camps. We've had some tremendous feedback for some guys in Freemasonry that have said they've had their kids or grandkids get involved with that, and the change they came back after that was amazing. Oh, they funny. thought it was a big impact and it just brought them out and actually gave them some reassurance. So there's been a great response on that.
That's fantastic to hear. And, and from what you just said, that's one of the reasons why Lorraine picked Canteen because she wanted to support a charity that money supported um, children, not young children. Um, but you look, at, this is fitted ideally with what she wanted to do. Yeah. And when we did some research, and Canteen came out uh, absolutely top of the top of the tree, and uh, she'd be more than happy to continue that support. Um, Fantastic. You had a lot of support and services there. How do you fund all that? <laughs> It's a great question. Um, so all of our services are completely free to the young people. Mm -hmm. So we rely really heavily on the support of the community. So 90% of our fundraising comes through community fundraising and donations. So people can get involved in different ways through the community. They can firstly um, become a regular donor where someone signs up to maybe give monthly. Um, you get people in the community running community fundraising events, doing quiz nights, holding barbecues, um, dress up events, whatever it might be, holding community fundraising events and doing that community fundraising to raise funds. Um, we have third party community fundraisers. So we actually have um, a volunteer of ours or a, a canteen champion of ours um, that's a third party uh, volunteer. She's been um, running her own bike ride, facilitating the bike ride for over 20 years yep. voluntarily. Um, that's raised a fantastic amount of money for canteen over that time. And she's one of our third party fundraisers that we value very highly. Um, and then it's um, people like um, your corporate partners and your people like that, who we can um, form a mutually beneficial relationship with where they can engage with a really trusted charitable brand to get some really strong outcomes themselves, whether that's around staff engagement, it's around their brand um, or their brand awareness. Um, and lots of different opportunities um, that can come from those types of relationships where we can benefit also through their charitable giving and their fundraising efforts. Um, but then there's the other 10%. That 10% comes from government funding. That government- 10%. 10 to only 10%. And that 10% okay. of government funding goes towards um, our more clinical work. So we advocate for clinical trials for yep. young people and fund those through the government funding so that young people can get access to the latest uh, treatment to give them the best opportunity for um, a good outcome with their treatment. And then we they also fund another arm of our service, which is the Youth Cancer Service, which is um, allocated in different hospitals around mm -hmm. um, Australia. One at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital, which I actually um, saw as one of the Past Grandmasters, is that correct? Yep. Um, and um, yeah, we have a youth cancer centre there that's specific for young people uh, aged 15 to 25 who have had their own cancer diagnosis. What we know when those young people go through um, a cancer diagnosis at that time is that they don't feel like they fit into the child-dominated children's hospitals mm -hmm. or um, the geriatric adult space that often is found in the cancer space in the adult hospitals. So then... We looked at that and said there needs to be a space for young people where there are um, clinicians and doctors and nurses who um, and psychologists who can really understand the needs of young people and, and the differences that they experience as a young person going through cancer. So those spaces were created and that's also government funded too. So really coming back to the 90%, without the community funding, without the awareness um, out there, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Is Bandana Day still going? National Bandana Day is one of our big flagship yep. fundraisers. So that happens on the last Friday of October, so coming up shortly. It's a good um, reminder for the Freemasons out there. Yeah, that would be... Get out there and support. That would be absolutely fantastic. You can log online at um, bandanaday.com com or dot com dot au maybe or dot org dot au should I say so bandana day dot org dot au um, and you can look for ordering bandanas there there's a shop so you can show your support that way too and as mentioned before it looks like the fundraising that we Lorraine's committee and, and the Freemasons got behind her and I would also like to mention at this point uh, the late um, uh, Welsh brother Frank Sontag who was uh, was going to do his thing for three years by growing his beard and his hair for three years, but unfortunately he passed away late last year. That group has organised over $50,000. Hopefully we'll have a bit more when, by the time the grand installation comes around. So in that kind of fundraising, have you got any idea roughly what difference that would do or what that would go for? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, firstly, would just like to 
um, recognise Frank and, and pay my respects there. Um, what an incredible thing that he, mm -hmm. he did. And um, I'm sure that's a legacy that's going to live on um, there. So thank you to Frank. Um, I'd also, yeah, just like to say a massive thank you, first of all, to the Freemasons for, um, for the fundraising that you've done over the last three years. Uh, when Lorraine called me and told me the amount, I was absolutely blown away from uh, what we'd first talked about. We talked about funding one of those overnight programs that we yep. discussed earlier. So the, the overnight programs last three days, two nights. Uh, we pay for all the food, accommodation, activities, staffing, volunteers. Um, they come to an out-of-pocket cost of about $20,000. Mm -hmm. And that includes flying people in from regional areas too. Um, so we said... You know, I pitched the, maybe you could look at fundraising for, and we could get a camp out of it. And she said, do you know what? I, I think we might be able to to get to two. We're, we're going to try and get to two. <laughs> and the and we, well, I was like, well, I, I would absolutely love it if you could do that. And um, that would be fantastic. Um, and then to hear when she called me that you've all um, managed to, to come together and raise um yeah, over 50, and by the sounds of it still going up, is, yeah, quite quite an achievement and quite incredible. So if you look at that, um, if it does keep going up and it gets close to that $60,000 mark, that's very close to, to three overnight programs. So giving 120 young Western Australian young people the opportunity to come together, connect, um, learn skills to be able to cope better, share their experiences with each other, reflect on their experiences, and then... Um, take those skills away to be able to progress their lives forward meaningfully is yeah truly um, amazing and if it w if it wasn't for people like you we wouldn't be able to provide these vital support services. Well, I'm telling you what the Lorraine and, and her committee, which is made up of, of little the partners and wives of Freemasons, they're the ones that do the driving, not just the Freemasons. Yep. We do it naturally anyway, but Lorraine and all her committee. Um, and they'll be acknowledged at the partners' breakfast at the Grand Installation in, in two weeks where, we're where Lorraine's going to present a, a cheque. Um, I'd also point out Lorraine is an apology for today. She would have actually loved to have been here, but she had some family duties with the, with the granddaughter. But, um, and we always say family always comes first, but uh, she's uh, been very happy the way things have gone. We would love to have a bit more support. But one final question without yeah. notice. Yep. And we've had one or two guys actually turn around saying, how can they help out? Can they, for example, volunteer to help out with camps? Yep. One guy, for example, is a volunteer ambulance driver. Um, he's qualified working with kids and everything else. Yep. Can they contact you and work out how they can volunteer to help you out? Yeah, for sure. So um, so firstly, we'll, we'll talk about volunteering. So um, definitely always willing to engage people with expertise. Um, as you can imagine, um, it's about the need that's present for what we have at that time coming yep. up. So if it's a program and there is a position available for, for someone to get involved, who ultimately, and it always comes back to, can they make a difference in the young people's lives, then 100% there's opportunities. But to give you a picture of it, we do have um, medical volunteers come along, so registered um, nurses, doctors, paramedics. We have um, psychosocial volunteers come along, so psychologists, counsellors, social workers. And we do also have general programme volunteers come along. So people who are just skilled at working with young people or have a yep. great energy about them and can really add to the vibe. So that's an example um, there for our programmes. Um, the other way um, that people can get involved is um, yeah, always willing to talk about different partnerships that can benefit, whether that's um, yeah, goods in kind, whether that's donations, whether that's expertise that can be provided, always willing to sit down and have a chat with the community. Um, and I know one thing that this community does really well is networking. Um, and even just by talking simply about canteen and what we do from m what I've shared today and getting the word out there will only benefit um, A, potentially young people and families getting the support they need and becoming aware of it, but B, potentially as well, encouraging someone else to fundraise and get involved. And, and that's one of the essence of the charity side of Freemasonry. We're not out there to help each other out. We're actually out there to, to help the community and help improve the bottom line. And our young kids are our future. Um, that's the foundation of our community uh, for the next 30 or 40 years. And, and I can tell you from a personal point of view, my father, when he got diagnosed with cancer, he was in Ward 9 at Fremantle Hospital, the cancer ward. And he was absolutely amazed, some of the young kids that were up there at the same time, their attitude was 
absolutely incredible. Mm. And uh, he originally thought that some people have been a bit bloody lazy and they look at themselves and everything else. But he, when he got was in that situation himself, uh, he was extremely impressed how some young people handled themselves. So, mm. but uh, I think, and just to, Peter to follow on from that, it's what that is. People often say, "Oh, it must be a really tough job you do." It's actually the most one of the most inspiring mm. jobs you could do because you meet so many amazing young oh, yeah. people and resilient and that add to the quality of your life um, and that's why I've been involved with Canteen for 10 years mm. um, I think the, lo the longevity of service speaks for itself really love what I do but um, the essence of what the young people bring to Canteen and, and my life it's very special and we hear those sorts of things all, all the time well, that's great well I think we'd be have to draw to a close we're pretty gone now to our time and uh Ash, thank you very much for, for coming along and explaining. If there's anybody out there that either wants to contribute to Lorraine's uh, fund, please do through the Sonic Foundation or directly to Canteen. Uh, they can contact Canteen at canteen.org.au. Correct. Um, and we might have some uh, email details or some other details on the uh, on the video when it gets published. So, Fantastic. again, whether you can help directly with cash, you can help out with time, contact Canteen. And I'm sure that any support would be gratefully appreciated. So on behalf of the Freemasons of Western Australia, thanks for coming in. We wish you all the best. And to everybody out there, um, stay healthy. And may your God go with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.